So in this video slide, we will be looking at the second approach in how we can take a database model and implement it into our database management system. Um, so we call this process as forward engineering a data model, and we are going to do that in our MISQL workbench. Um, so we want to make sure that uh, we do have our data model that is finalized and we will review it. Um, we also have to ensure that the foreign keys and primary keys are set correctly. An important thing is that if we have foreign keys, they need to match with the data type values of the primary keys and they need to be correctly defined in Workbench. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring, I'll open up MySQL Workbench um, so that we can open one of the models that we have recently created, which is our textbook model. And then we're going to go and um, see how we can take that textbook model and forward engineer it. Um, so again, as a first step, a reminder, this is typically where we are. Um, we can always go into our modeling area by clicking here. And if you have recently worked with a model, you should see it here. But if not, you can always click on this open folder here and locate where you have saved your model and open it from there. I'm going to go ahead and double click on this textbook model um, because that's the model that we just recently worked with. And when I'm here, I'm going to double click on my EER diagram. And as you can see, this is the model that we recently worked on creating. So all of you should have completed this as a class assignment. Again, we have our entities that are listed here. We have publisher, board, textbook, and then we have um, author has textbook and that's connected to the table textbook and author because textbook and author has a many to many relationship. So this is what we currently have here. Um, and again, we want to make sure that before we are going to forward engineer that we review our foreign keys and make sure that the data types match. And we also want to make sure that we haven't accidentally created multiple foreign keys because there are two ways in which we can relate. And we looked at that in our previous video slides. We can have MySQL Workbench generate the foreign key for us in a one to many, or we can list the foreign key ahead of time in our ER entity and then we can connect that link that using this option here. So it's very important that we take a little bit time to review our model to make sure that you don't have redundant attributes in your table in your entities uh, because that could lead to having redundant attributes as you push this into your final model. So it's very important in this case we have publisher ID which is an integer data type and we know that we have publisher ID which is also defined as an integer data type so that pretty much also we know that we have publisher ID in the board entity and it also has a matching data type uh, with the publisher ID that it's linked to in the publisher entity and we see that we have already created this associative entity that was automatically created for us through workbench um, and, you know, we know that we don't have any other extra attributes or um, foreign keys that are um, in this entity. So we, we are pretty much good at this point. But before you forward engineer your model, you want to take time to review it carefully um, and to make sure that everything looks good. And at that point, what we can do is we can come up to the top to our options on the menu. And if we click under database, we're going to see this option that says forward engineer. And that's the option. And what essentially MySQL Workbench is going to do is it's going to take this model and automatically generate the code um, in SQL based on what we have represented in this model. And then it pushes it into the server and automatically creates a schema for us. So we click on database and then we click on forward engineer. And then we're going to see this option um, that gives us the standard um, TCP IP connection and the local host, which is all kind of okay to leave as it is. And then we click on next. And then we see these options here. We don't want to check anything because if, for example, it says skip creation of foreign keys, you don't want to skip that. You want to have MySQL automatically generate everything for you so that it automatically creates the schema, the primary keys, the foreign key relationships and everything for us. So we can leave that option like that. We hit next um, and then we keep the option that says export my SQL table objects. We want to keep that as well selected. We don't need to check any of these because we're not concerned with views or routines or triggers at this point. So we can leave them all as it is. We don't change any of the option. We click next. 
And then what we're seeing right now is the SQL script that has been automatically generated for us based on the schema that we have here. And if you take a minute to review it, you will see that a lot of the script uh, commands here are very familiar for us. It says create schema, and then we have create table, and then we are listing all the attributes with the data types that we have defined. Um, we also have um, all the other tables that we have listed. We have our publisher table, the textbook table here. Um, and then we can also see that the foreign key references are automatically generated in the script for us based on how we have set it up in our model. So MySQL pretty much automatically creates the script for us and we can take a minute to just quickly review it. We don't need to change anything in it. Um, and then we can hit next here. And as you can see here, the forward engineer process completes by connecting to the DBMS, executing the script, um, making any changes and saving our synchronization state. So if you have correctly um, set your model in terms of your data types and foreign key associations, you should see a blue check everywhere. But if you have any errors, it will show up here in case the data type doesn't match or there is a mismatch because what it's doing is it's taking its script and trying to push it into the system. And there are certain things that need to match. And if they like in terms of foreign key data types and primary key definitions and things like that, and as, lo as long as they all look good, they will automatically execute. So we can hit close at this point. Um, and then we can co close our textbook model here and we can go back to MySQL and we can directly connect to the server here. So at this point, uh, what we can do is we can come in and refresh our schema here. And as you can see, you will see your textbook. Um, I already had a textbook DB model created. That's why you're seeing two of that here. But you should automatically see your textbook model created here with all the um, different attributes that we have created. Um, and then it shows you the name of the table, author, board, publisher, textbook, textbook, author. And um, so, and I think this is my older version. So I'm going to open the other one that I just created, which is textbook DB. And as you can see, it has author has textbook because that was the name that I had used. But of course, keep in mind that you can always change these names and make them shorter before you forward engineer them because ultimately these are the names that we are going to require in our queries. So we can further expand our author, expand the columns, click here or click on our columns and make sure that whatever we had originally in our model has been pushed in in terms of attributes. Um, and just confirm their existence here. So after that point, um, if we want to populate our tables with values, we can come here, click on the spreadsheet symbol, and we can start entering values. For example, if I want to have author A and I want to say Tim as my first name, and if I want to have uh, Brooks as my last name, I can enter that value and if I want to enter more values I can but for the demo I'm just going to stick with one. Once I'm done with this I can hit my apply here and it automatically again generates my insert into statement which I can hit apply for finish. Close my author um, and if just, you can always just refresh it and then you can come and again click on the spreadsheet symbol and you should see that it has populated values into your table. So this is one approach that we can take and you can follow the same steps for the other tables that you have to populate it with values. And once you have your values, you're ready to run your query. So again, to recap, this is another way we need to have a well-defined model. We can go into Workbench, we can forward engineer that model and it automatically generates the scripts for us. So once we have our table schema here, remember you would have to insert values into it. Again, there's two ways in which you can do it. You can come here using the spreadsheet and manually enter the values or you can go ahead and create a new SQL script and type the insert into values statement to populate your tables with values. So there are multiple approaches that we can take in order to um, realize and populate our database.